So you want to make a stunning ice effect for your miniatures or terrain, or you want to make uh, ice blocks to give a cool winter look to your army of undead behind the wall. Whether is the reason, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a very realistic ice effect. The process is extremely fast and simple to follow. One product that I'm going to use is this one. This is the Blue Stuff by Green Stuff World. It's a kind of a silicon that has a very nice property. When you put in a hot water it becomes very soft. So you can make a negative of anything you want to replace or to recreate. Another cool feature of the Blue Stuff is that you can use it over and over again. But don't worry, I will show you how to use it in the tutorial. The range of material I'm gonna use to make the ice rocks are very easy to find. I got little stones from IKEA but you can get also from a nearby park. I got a slate plate from Amazon, which I smashed in small pieces, UV resin with a UV torch, the blue stuff and a piece of aluminum foil. Ok, so let's begin. I'm pouring hot water in a bowl. Be careful to do not burn yourself and to use a heat resistant wall for the water, not like mine. Then place your blue stuff and let it get warm. When the blue stuff gets warm it becomes quite sticky, so you can stir it to avoid that it gets stuck on the bowl surface. The first of the three ice blocks will be icy spikes, so this is a very fun part and a very creative. I cut aluminum foil in smaller pieces. The size really depends on how big you want to make the ice. So I twist the aluminum foil to create a sharp spike like shape and I cut the unwanted parts. Be sure that the aluminum foil is well pressed and it isn't loose. This will help when we will use it as a negative on a blue stuff. So the shape is very up to the project you wanna do. You can make very tiny little spikes or massive one. If you want to make big shapes, then I recommend using a piece of paper inside the aluminum foil. This will make it more solid and you do not need to waste a lot of aluminum foil. It always happens to me that I'm not always sure about what kind of project I want to do next, so it's a good habit to do spare parts, especially using the blue stuff. Once we are happy with our aluminum spikes, let's take our soft and warm blue stuff. As always, do not get burned taking the blue stuff out of the water. We work it like a dough, to make it enough large to contain our aluminum spikes. You need to work the blue stuff fast because it takes few minutes to cool down, so if you wanna use it again, you have to warm it up again. Once ready, we toss the spikes into the blue stuff. Do not worry for the front side, it doesn't really matter if they are not perfectly round. However, if you toss them very deep into the blue stuff, you can actually make a more rounded shape. It is always useful to make very different shapes because later on you can combine them and give motion and variety to your diorama. Just a disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by any partner. I just want to show you the things I have in my hobby tool case. And the blue stuff is absolutely one of them. I use it for many projects and I love the fact that it's reusable. Ok, now that it's ready, to speed up the process you can place the blue stuff into the freezer. So 
while we wait for the blue stuff to cool down, I just want to thank you for watching my video. If you like, hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comment below for which kind of project you are going to use this eyes. Once the blue stuff is cold, we can remove our aluminum models from it. And as you can see, even in a cold state, the blue stuff preserves elasticity. So we can easily bend it to ease the process. This is an optional step, I'm using dishwasher detergent to cover the recesses of the blue stuff. In this way it's easy to keep the blue stuff extremely clean. Ok, now it's time for the UV resin. We fill the recesses with the UV resin and the process is very easy because the UV resin surface tension will help you to do not spill it out from the blue stuff. If you haven't already, you can check my previous video on how to make a realistic and super fast flat ice base. Now we use our UV torch to cure the resin. If you don't have any, you can use the best and most affordable UV torch in the market, the sun. <laughs> With a UV torch after a couple of minutes the resin is cured and we can remove our beautiful eyes from the blue stuff. If you see bubbles inside, you can either leave them, as I think they increase realism or you can remove them by using a toothpick or a disposable brush. And here the result. A super realistic, stunning ice spike. The second realistic ice I'm gonna create is ice slabs. For this recipe we are gonna use slates broken in pieces. Slates is perfect because when you break in fragment they got a natural shape like broken ice on a lake surface. It is important that you put slates inside a resistant bag before you hammer it. Watch out as the fragments may injure your hand or eyes, so use also gloves and safety glasses. So we warm the blue stuff once more and we toss the slates into it. Slates fragments are quite delicate, so it may happen that when you push into the blue stuff they may broke. Just remove the fragment after the blue stuff cooled down. I really love this part and every time I'm surprised on how fast I can get tons of icy stuff. The shape is really up to you, you can use even weird material as a small root from a park and the effect will always be incredible. Ok, let's move to the third and final part. Let's create ice blocks and assemble them in a very cool miniature base. For the third ice I'm gonna use IKEA stones for plants. You can also get little stones from your garden or a nearby park, but I prefer IKEA stones because they are clean and white so I can see the shape I want for my eyes. Also you can use them for your diorama as well, or your plants. Again we warm the blue stuff. This time I'm working the blue stuff in a way that it has a wider thickness because the stones are not flat as the slates. Be sure that the blue stuff is thick enough to contain all the stones. Then after we are gonna use the UV resin and we cure it with a UV torch as we did before. Start gluing with super glue a piece of slabs we did before to this base, which will be the structure of our glacier. I prime it with my airbrush, you can do with a spray can or simply with a liquid primer and a brush. The colors I'm gonna use are by Army Painter, but as always you can create the same color effect with Citadel or Vallejo or other brands. In my comment below you will find a conversion chart of the colors that I'm using to the Citadel one. To paint this base I'm using the wet blending technique, which consists in painting while the colors are still wet. This is a very fun and stressless technique and it's perfect for painting this kind of base. To simulate the glacier 
we are painting the darker color on the border of the base, while in the center, where the ice block or the glazier is merging, we are painting with very bright colors. Once dry, we are ready to add our ice. I start selecting which ice piece I will glue, just to make sure how I want the composition to be. With UV resin I cover everything but the rock. As you see, UV Resin Surface Tension is excellent to work on flat surface. Just use a disposable brush to work it and with a UV torch you can instantly cure in case you see that the resin is going to spill out. Adding resin on each side of our glazier will increase the realistic effect and smooth further the color transition over the base. Before gluing everything together, I test which combination of my ice blocks work with the base composition. Once I'm happy, I just glue everything together. Super glue is transparent so it won't change the result and it works perfectly with the cured UV resin. Now our beautiful base is done, and the result is wonderful. A final but optional step is to add some icy snow in the recesses between the ice blocks. There are tons of product to simulate snow. I got Army Painter Snow Flocks, Vallejo Extra Heavy Gel and Environment Snow Effect. But I will show you that you don't need to use all this product, and all of them work well to create realistic snow. So if you have snowflocks of any brand, you can mix it with any kind of acrylic gel. If you have a snow paste like Vallejo Environment, it's basically the same. Mix it with the extra heavy gel and the effect will be similar. I got a Malta snow effect from an art store. I recommend to visit your local art store to check stuff that can be used for our hobby. You will be surprised of how many good quality and cheap products you can find. As you can see, the results of all these products are very similar, so pick one you like or combine them as you prefer. I'm applying the snow flocks mixed with heavy gel to the recesses of the ice blocks and over the base. This is uh, really optional, but I think it gives extra realism. And voila, this is the result, a skeleton walking on a beautiful glacier ready to fight the livings. Or a large glacier that witnessed the struggle of a tyrant against my space wolf captain. So it's pretty much everything for today, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you like hit the like button, subscribe and let me know in the comment below for which kind of project you are gonna use these eyes. You can also follow me on Instagram where I usually post my weekly project or we can simply have a chat. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one.